This week on the RV Podcast... What you need to know for safe drinking water while camping. The latest on the RV camping event of the year, Monday's total eclipse of the sun. How that collapsed bridge in Baltimore will alter travel routes for RVers this summer. All this plus the RV News of the Week and your questions coming up in Episode 491 of the RV Podcast. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Wendland, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. Hello, Mr. Mike. And um, just like that, it's April. And Mike and I hope that you had a great Easter and that spring weather keeps improving. And we're still down in Florida, wrapping up a three-month stay in the Sunshine State that has been interspersed with lots of traveling and video projects. And we'll probably start the long trek north later this week with a stop at uh, Loblolly Ridge, our RV property in Tennessee, to hitch up our Montana fifth wheel and bring it up to our Michigan property so we're closer to our planned summer trips. And we have a bunch of them planned. If you're curious about our day-to-day activities, we are regularly sharing what we're doing through updates and photos on our very fast-growing RV lifestyle community. And you can find that at community. Dot rvlifestyle.com. This past week, uh, I don't know if you heard, there was yet another controversy involving Facebook that saw Facebook being accused of revealing the private messages sent by its members to one of its big advertisers. And it comes after lots of controversy involving Facebook's data collection policies as well as censorship issues and the way it only shows some posts to a fraction of a Facebook group's membership. And over the weekend, we even saw some Facebook members complaining that their Easter posts were removed by Facebook with with no explanation. And that is why we started our RV Lifestyle community. It is completely separate from Facebook, and it now has 10,000 members. If you haven't become a part of it, we, we really invite you to join us. It's a community dot rvlifestyle.com you'll find it's warm it's welcoming it's very friendly with uh, uh, some 20 different special interest spaces that are devoted to various aspects of the rv lifestyle so uh, join it up uh, community.rvlifestyle.com when we come back the social media buzz stay with us The one thing that can ruin a perfect RV trip is a bad mattress. And believe us, we know. Over the years, we've tried many and we have found them all wanting until now. Now, we sleep on the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Quite simply, it's the best we've ever slept on. We chose a queen-size Aurora Lux medium firm mattress that arrived tightly rolled in a box. All we did was put it on the bed, unroll it, and wait for it to recover from the compression. Then we put on the sheets and the bed covers and found we slept so well that we ordered another one for our home. That's how comfortable it is. Our sleep is now so luxurious and deep that we can't imagine using a different mattress. Shipping is free. If you're disappointed with the current mattress in your RV, you owe it to yourselves to try the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Brooklyn Bedding sends out all of their RV mattresses from their own factory in Arizona. This means they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price for you with no middleman bringing up the cost. Don't miss out on the best sleep of your life. Visit rvmattress.com slash RV lifestyle. Welcome back. Time now for the social media buzz. And Wendy Boyer reports on the hot issues most talked about this past week on social media and on our RV Lifestyle community group. Hi, everybody. Over in our RV Lifestyle solo travel space, Tina recently wrote that she's going on her first solo trip. She gave a little background on herself. She used to be a camper, an RVer, years ago with her husband and kids. But now um, her kids are grown and she and her husband are divorced. She recently retired 
and she just has a travel bug and wants to go. So she's planned this epic cross-country trip to the Grand Canyon, pulling her A, um, her A liner pop up. And when she told her mom about her plans, her mom was starting to say it wasn't safe. And so she started to get nervous. And so she asked our community just for some encouragement and some safety tips along the way. And it was so great to see everyone rally around her, telling her she could do it and also offering some pointers. Um, for instance, Lois, she said, you know, for that first trip, especially, make sure you only stay in campgrounds that have really good reviews from real people. Um, just the importance of knowing you're in a safe, good place. Um, Bob, he said to make sure you don't make yourself a target, you know, don't wear expensive clothes or jewelry, um, and to just maybe take a class on how to use mace so you have that little bit of knowledge if you need it, give yourself confidence. And many, many women said, listen to your intuition, don't be afraid to leave day or night. But overall, people told her, just go for it. And every time you do it again, it's going to get easier and you're just going to have the time of your life. Um, also in our community, in the Mods and DIY Tweak space, everyone was sharing their favorite modifications. And this is a post you need to check out for some ideas. Um, a small sampling, uh, Tanya said she got a Bluetooth leveler. Sounds like it was really, really helpful. Steve, he changed those blinds in his RV from the string ones, you know, that come with it to blackout blinds or blackout curtains. And it sounds like that made a huge difference. And Don, he suggested getting a portable fire pit with a propane tabletop heater. Um, but again, many, many ideas in there, and that's just a small sampling. And then meanwhile, over in our RV Lifestyle Facebook group, one post that got people talking was from Martha. Martha said, or she asked, how do people keep their house safe when you're gone on a long RV trip? Sounds like she and her husband are getting ready to go off for maybe their first super long RV trip and they don't have family in their area. And while they live in a, sounds like a nice neighborhood, low crime area, she's still worried about just safety and leaving her home that long. And so there were some great ideas in this uh, post Judith, she suggested setting timers for her lights and maybe a radio. Also maybe getting one of those cameras that will alert you if there's anything going outside your house. Brian, he said, if you have some good neighbors, tell them you're gonna be gone, ask them to check on your house. Maybe they can park their cars in your driveway, get your mail, kind of make it look like you're still there. Uh, Ashley, she was one of many who suggested getting a house sitter, that that might be an option for a few months. But overall, probably the most common suggestion was at least for a little bit, consider investing in a monitored alarm system for your house. So again, some good ideas there to a very good question. And that's it for me this week. I'm Wendy Boyer, and I will see you next time in the RV Lifestyle community or Facebook group. We've wrestled with the whole issue of what do you do about your house when you're traveling, and uh, it's tough. Good neighbors or relatives who can empty your mailbox uh, and do so every day, that is really a big help. You can uh, have the post office uh, hold your mail for, I think it's a month. A month, but after that, um, they just are going to deliver it. So you have to have them deliver it someplace. So um, that's always a good thing. You can find that on the post office website. But uh, And then a lot of people have mail uh, forwarding services. And uh, we have one um, that you can find in our partners page at rvlifestyle.com slash partners. Uh, and then and those mail forwarding services, basically, you have all your mail sent to them. Uh, they scan it, uh, and then you can access it and look at a digital issue of whatever it is, a picture of it. And uh, they can mail it to you if you need it physically, or they can shred it, or they can open it and send you uh, all sorts of information on it so you don't have to worry about your mail piling up. And it absolutely amazes me all the information that people share. Some things are so simple and you haven't thought of it, but that group really serves a purpose. Yep. Uh, our RV Lifestyle community is is the place to go. And we still have our Facebook group, obviously, because mm -hmm. it's, it's pushing 400,000 members now. But uh, with all those members, you know, posts get buried and you can't find stuff and there's a lot of nastiness. And that's why we started the... The, for the hardcore RVers who really want to connect and be friendly and have fun and kind of like have a big virtual campground, that's why we started uh, the, um, the community.rvlifestyle.com. 
All right, when we come back, the interview of the week, and we're going to talk about getting the most important part of your RV ready for the new camping season, and that is uh, your um, filtration system for your drinking water. Stay with us. Jennifer and I bought some land near Nashville, Tennessee a while back. We got tired of crowded, expensive campgrounds and worrying about reservations. Tennessee is a gorgeous state with friendly people, and it has been such a pleasure. Coming up on April 13th, the same developer has some new property near us close to the Natchez Trace and Buffalo River called The Reserve at High Forest. Big properties, five to 41 acres. You can build a house, a cabin, or RV year round. Prices start at only $89,900. Your property, your way, 100% ownership. The scenery in this part of Tennessee is breathtaking, and the property is gorgeous. Garden, landscape, bring your pets, build what you want. There's high-speed fiber optic internet, and it is so private. A great place to make your home base ready whenever you want it. They're selling these on April 13th by appointment, five to 41 acre properties from $89,900. There's even great financing, Check out the site and a video tour at rvlands.net. That's rvlands.net. Welcome back. It's time now for the RV interview of the week. And for many RVers, spring means one thing. The summer camping season is almost here. But just as important as choosing this year's adventures is making sure your rig is ready to go. And a key part of that preparation is maintaining your RV's water filtration system. Now, this is important stuff. If you haven't already done this to your RV for this new season, listen up. And uh, in the show notes for this episode, I'll put links to the the stuff, the products that we use to keep our water safe and and, uh, tasting good. Well, to help us learn everything that an RVer should know about getting your rig's water filtration system ready for the camping season... Uh, We are going to interview Noah Cronin. He is the marketing manager at Campco. And with a name like Noah, he's got to understand water. That is very good. That is very good. Well, Campco's uh, made in the USA products and uh, for RVers, and a big part of it is water filtration. And Noah, (laughs) Noah is going to help you, Noah, all about it. Let's start with... Springtime, uh, getting our RVs ready to go. And we're obviously talking about our water system now. What's the first thing we should do? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, glad to be on here. Uh, whenever it comes to springtime, getting excited to go camping, the first thing that I like to do is to make sure that I have a brand new water filter. Um, water filtration is Extremely important um, if you are at the campsite and you don't know what kind of water quality that the campsite has, um, having a water filter can be very beneficial and it can really elevate your camping experience. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the quality of the water that is at campgrounds. Uh, Mm -hmm. A lot of people, uh, I'm amazed when I go to a campground and I see so many of them just hooked up with a hose directly to the spigot. And uh, I think that they don't realize what is coming out of that spigot in many cases. Talk about that for us a little bit so we can understand, one, why we need a water filter. Yeah, so there's, um, well, the thing is, you don't really always know what's in the water. Um, and I think that's that's the danger or a scary part of it is um, when you don't know what's in the water, it's better to have some sort of filtration. That way you can... Um, know what's being filtered out of the water. So this water filter in particular, it's it's made right here um, in North Carolina. It's where I'm at. I can walk and go watch them being made. It's it's a wonderful um, experience. It's a, it's a patented water filter. Um, we have a six step filtration process that has a premium carbon activated um, additive in it, and it protects against the uh, bad tastes, the odors, the chlorine, uh, the heavy metals uh, that can be in the water, and that that's really what the water filter is for. It also has a, a superior KDF additive, and that protects against bacteria growth, uh, fungus, and mold growth. So that's really what you want to look for in a, in a filter to make sure that those 
heavy metals, those things that potentially could be in your water at the campground are filtered out of the water for whenever you can drink it. Um, you don't have to bring as many water bottles. Uh, same thing for showering and doing dishes. You don't have those uh, heavy metals and chemicals that could potentially be in your water if you don't have any control over it. Now, you mentioned KDF. What, what, what is a KDF? What, what's that? KDF is a, um, it is a granular um, additive that we put in these water filters. Um, and what that use is, or the purpose of that, is to protect against that fungus and that mold and bacteria growth. Um, it helps reduce that. Uh, anytime you have water just sitting, uh, especially in storage, uh, same thing when, when you get your RV out of storage, you want to flush your systems and um, make sure that it doesn't have that, that bad taste and odor. Uh, but that additive KDF is to help prevent that bacteria growth uh, whenever you've already run water through it and it's just sitting. Is that one of the reasons we should replace it every season? Because while it's sitting idle for you know, several months or several weeks, whatever people are using it in storage, that bacteria could grow because the, you know, the filters are damp. Is that, is that one of the reasons we should replace it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, there's quite a few reasons and one, it all depends on how much you use it, which I think is, is um, a question we get often is how, how often should I replace my water filter? And I recommend three months, um, but it does depend on how much you use your filter how much water you run through it, and also depends on uh, the quality of the water that you run through it. Because different areas around the country have different quality water. And what happens is the water comes into contact with that, that uh, the granular that's inside of this, the KDF and the carbon. And over time, that water um, uses up the um, ingredients that are inside the filter. So what happens is after a few months, you'll start to smell the bad odors and taste the bad tastes again. And that's how you really know you need a new filter. Okay. So about every three months and at the beginning of every camping season. Um, yes, definitely. And that's, of course, obviously one part of really three different parts that I, I want to touch on here. The other two parts yeah. have to do with um, the water pressure that comes out of a campground. Uh Talk about that a little bit. I think a lot of people just assume because there's a spigot there that it's safe. And I always recommend a water pressure regulator, but you could explain what a water pressure regulator does probably better than I can. So yeah, tell us. Well, I don't know about that, but yeah, um, it, I also recommend a water regulator, a water pressure regulator. Uh, it's the same thing with you can't control what's in your water. You also can't control the pressure of your water uh, when you go to the campground. So RV pipes are not the same as the pipes that you have at home. Um, many of them aren't rated for more than 40 to 50 PSI. Some are, but uh, for the most part, you want to stay in that 40 to 50 PSI. And um, there's a, a variety of different filters. I brought some with me. So we have um, different kinds. This is one that people really love. It's basic. It's a, it's a brass water filter. We have a stainless steel one too. Um, this one actually is 50 to 60 PSI. So if you like a little bit higher pressure and you know that your RV can handle it, that's a good option. Um, but I always recommend, I brought this one. Um, this is an adjustable one. So you can, uh, it has a gauge on it and you can adjust what you want your water pressure to be. But it's extremely important that you have that because if you don't, um, water pressure can, uh, well, when there's bursts, it can uh, cause a, a burst in your pipe or it could cause leaks in your RV. So you'll um, open up the door and there'll be water on the floor. I've heard that story a few times. It's actually happened to um, an RV that we've had here. So um, it's very important that you have a water pressure regulator just to, to have that safety um, uh, to protect against your hose and your filter as well. So all around, there's multiple reasons to have a water pressure regulator. I was at a campground just this week, actually. And I was I was uh, just about ready to hook this up. And I turned on, I always turn on the spigot and let it run for about 20 seconds, just in case there's anything that, that got in that pipe. And I was just yeah. blown away at how much pressure there was. I would have had no idea, but it was way over, I'm sure, 50, 50 pounds. And so I, I was so glad I, I did that first and saw it. So we got a water pressure regulator we recommend. That goes on the spigot. And then exactly. we have the, the the filter, which goes at the other end of the water pressure regulator. Yeah. What about the hose? Um, yeah. I There's all sorts of hoses out there. 
I've always thought that it's wise to replace your hose as well at the yeah. start of every season. Uh, talk about choosing the right uh, hose for your water system. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely have an opinion on the hoses, and I understand where you're at with the regulator. One of my favorite things to do is to hook it up to the spigot, and then you can really see like what the PSI is. So you'll see if it's like some campgrounds, campgrounds I've seen have 100 PSI. And so you know if yeah. that's going into your RV, that's a huge risk. Um, but all that aside, like you said, you have your regulator that hooks up to the spigot on this end. Um, then the next thing is this flexible hose protector. Um, this is this can be a weak point of strain when it's hooked up directly to the regulator. So then you want to hook up your flexible hose protector to what we have is called a pre-filter. This sediment pre-filter filters out all of the, the large, if there's any sand or dirt or anything that's um, coming out of the spigot before it gets to your filter, um, you want to go ahead and hook that up. And then, like you said, it goes through your filter. And then my... Uh, what I recommend is what we have. It's called our EvoFlex hose. So you can see it there. Um, this that's is, what I have. Yeah, that's what I is, used. That's excellent. Uh, this is the best hose, hands down, that I've ever used. Um, I have four or five at home. I have 200 feet worth at least. I give them as gifts to my parents, to my friends. Uh, they're, it's a wonderful hose to have. It's flexible. There's no memory. But um, that's my personal recommendation. Uh, but whenever you're looking for a water hose for your RV, the number one thing to look for is to make sure that it's drinking water safe. Uh, and you can find that on the packaging. So here's the packaging for our EvoFlex hose. And you'll see it right here, um, drinking water safe, lead free, BPA free, phthalate free. Um, that's that's the main thing to look for in a water hose whenever you're looking to, to purchase one. And like you said, um, I know I know quite a few people that purchase one at the beginning of every season. You can you can go a little bit longer, but again, that does depend on how much you use it, and it also depends on how you store it. Um, I I have a friend that uses a blowout plug every time he's done camping, and he flushes out all the water out of the hose to make sure there's no water sitting in there before he uh, stores it. So depends on usage and storage, uh, but yeah, I think that every season or every other season would be a good idea to replace your, your RV water hose as well. One of the things that I like about that hose you just showed is that it doesn't kink. And it's the only one yeah. I have found that doesn't kink. A lot of them say kink free. They all kink. That one doesn't. And it, like I said, it doesn't have a memory. So I'm able to wind, wind it up and it stays uh, fairly well coiled. Uh, exactly. I didn't think about using a little, uh, you know, um, a blower to kind of blow out that, uh, that water in it as you store it. Uh, I tend to. Yeah. Uh, grind it up and just let it all come out the hose and, and put it away. But we camp a lot, so it doesn't sit in there long. It all right, so those are the three it. things that we recommend that everybody get a new water filter at the start of every season. Absolutely. Replace it about every three months. A water yes. pressure regulator. And uh, I think the one that you showed, because it actually shows you how much pressure there is. Um, and that, yeah. Now that's made out of brass, I think, isn't it? Yeah, that, this is brass. That's right. And why is that? Because I've seen water filter pressures regulators that are out of plastic. But why would is black is brass better because it's heavier? Or what? it is a more durable uh, regulator. We do have a plastic one, like I mentioned. Um, it, it, it this is a very entry level regulator. It all depends on how much you can't. A lot of people prefer the brass. Um, it is lead free, like I mentioned before. So you want to make sure that um, the materials that you're using are also safe. Um, or I guess. Like I said, lead free. There is this stainless steel one as well. Uh, there's different options, and it's it's personal preference and also just what what you prefer as an RVer. Yeah, it's 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 really a must have thing. And then we get into the hose and uh, uh, keeping it good. Is it one little silly little question that I noticed when you are hooking up your hose to your RV and you've got some left? Is it good to coil it or is it good to stretch it all out? Do you have any recommendations along that line? Yeah, um, we actually, Camco has a, what we call a water hose basket, and it is okay to coil it up. Um, like you mentioned, sometimes you have 20 feet, 30 feet of hose left over, depending on how long of a water hose you have. Um, I wouldn't recommend like tightly winding it, uh, but you can coil it around in a circle. And, and we generally do that because, and we put that kind of under where it hooks up to the RV at. Yeah. Um, that way you don't have 50 foot of hose just 
you know, all over there and everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, it looks neater. And I know, though, the opposite is not is true with uh, the electrical power cord. That they say yeah. you should not coil because too much heat builds up in the coil. But that's a, in the cord. But that's another story. Water hose, yeah. it's okay to coil it. Well, Noah, yeah. you've been a big help. It's a new camping season. Uh, I am a, a user, a happy user of uh, your, your uh, water filter, your hose, and that water filter. And as we uh, see everybody getting underway for uh, the spring and the new season of camping, uh, those are three things that should be on everybody's list. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week. We'll yes, put links, by so the much. way, in our description below to all these products. And uh, people can uh, can learn more about them from there. Again, thanks That's so much. Right. Thank you, too. Happy camping. Now, if you go to rvlifestyle.com slash podcast, look in the show notes for this episode, and we will put our Amazon affiliate links for the products we recommend, uh, including the water filter, which is the Camco Taste Pure filter. Uh, the water hose that uh, I'm using this year now is the Camco Evil Flex water hose. What I like about it is it doesn't kink up like other uh, hoses that we have used. And uh, we use uh, the Camco Adjustable Brass Water Pressure Regulator. What I like about that is it's got a gauge right on it. And uh, you can see what the pressure is and you can actually adjust how much comes through your, your hose. Um, and again, I said at the beginning that Camco's products are all made in the U.S. And uh, we um, are big, uh, big uh, fans of the company. We thank Noah for coming on and helping us all know more about this. I'm never going to quit saying that. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> All right. When we come back, we've got the RV news of the week. You know what? Mike, that's not <laughs> funny. Stop it. Okay. We just heard about a land offering out west for RVers in Arizona. They're selling five-acre RV ranches starting at only $49,900. The company offering it is affiliated with the people Jennifer and I bought our Tennessee property from. They do a great job. It looks amazing. It is at high elevation, so you get cooler temperatures, big mountain views, juniper trees, and green grasses. And it is near everything. The Grand Canyon, Lake Havasu, Kingman, Flagstaff, and Sedona. It's a perfect place to have a home base to explore the West, and it is right off famous Route 66. It's called Greenwood Ranches, and this is the second and final section of the community. They're selling it off this April. We met the sales manager, really nice guy. He bought a property for his RV, and he's building a container home on it. Check out their website for a video tour and showing availability. It's pretty incredible. Visit the website to get details and set up a showing ArizonaRVLand.net. That's ArizonaRVLand.net. Well, welcome back, everybody. Time now for the RV News of the Week. And many RVers are preparing for what's becoming the RV event of the year, the solar eclipse. Are, are you traveling this weekend to a campground to watch the Monday, April 8th solar eclipse? If yes, you're not alone out there by any means. The eclipse is quickly becoming the event not to miss for many RVers. Our RV Lifestyle community and our RV Lifestyle Facebook group are full of folks taking pictures of themselves hitting the road and sharing their plans to catch the eclipse at a campground. And many campgrounds, state parks, and universities in the path of the total eclipse are planning special events, stores, Farmers and residents are, are charging for people to park on their property. And some communities are expecting so many tourists, officials are issuing warnings for locals to stop up, stock up on groceries and fill their tanks because of massive crowds. And most of the U.S. will see the eclipse, but the path of totality, where the moon will completely block out the sun, is a 115-mile wide region that stretches from southern Texas in a northeast line up through northern Maine. Now, it's really interesting. I, I read, I think one of the, the hottest areas in the whole continent for it is Niagara Falls. Ooh. And uh, in uh, Niagara Falls, Ontario, 
which is the bigger tourist area, has declared a state of emergency. Oh. And uh, that's be, uh, they're expecting so many people. Uh, they've also, uh, in many of these places, they've uh, boof, be, beefed up uh, the cell phone towers because they expect the cell phone systems to be overrun. And um, it's so many people are gathering along that 115-mile stretch that goes up across the continent. It's going to be pretty neat. I am really happy that local officials in a lot of communities are telling people to stock up on food and gas because uh, you run out. You know, it seems like grocery stores have like just enough. If you ever go in there on Monday morning and the shelves are bare, you know, the local people really do need to get what they need before the locusts come in. <laughs> well, they're going to be uh, they're going to be out there. So um, if you're doing it, uh, go on our RV Lifestyle uh, community community on RV Lifestyle account. Post your pictures if you can get a cell phone signal. If not, do it when you get out of the area and you can. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll all celebrate it together. Uh, if you're heading over to California's uh, Fort Ord National Monument, it's a really neat place, by the way. Uh, you should know that the Bureau of Land Management has an important message. Don't go off designated hiking paths. You might get blown up. <laughs> Seriously, if you go off trail, they're saying that you may uh, step on dangerous artillery projectiles, uh, rockets, hand grenades, practice line, land mines, uh, bombs, all sorts of demolition material. Uh, the Fort Ord National Monument is a former U.S. Army base, and it's located in Monterey, California, uh, Monterey County, and it was created as a park in 2012. Uh, recently, though, uh, people have been just setting off and making illegal trails, and uh, they've been discovered rest of the, the Barloy Canyon Road, if you know the, uh, the monument area there. And they're issuing this warning because it is very dangerous. Now, the park has 86 miles of trails, and it's managed by both the Bureau of Land Management and the U.S. Uh, Army. Beautiful location, no camping, but be careful there. It reminds me when we went boondocking on uh, the bombing range at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. And uh, every place you go there, there's signs that, you know, be careful. If you see any of this stuff, you have to watch a video before you get a camping permit there. That shows you what you do if you come across an empty, an unexploded bomb, which they find with regularity. Eglin's this huge stretch uh, in the panhandle of Florida, and they have several uh, campgrounds where you can boondock. But uh, that is a bit disconcerting, isn't it, to, to yeah. be in a bombing range? Right. People have to follow the rules, and for some people, that's harder than other people. All right. Continuing okay, on. Okay, continuing on. In case you haven't heard about Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing last week after a container ship crashed into it, we want to share we want to share it here because this is going to affect RV travel plans for a, a long time. The bridge collapsed after a huge ship loaded with 4,700 containers crashed into it in the middle of the night after the pilot lost control of steering, killing and injuring construction workers who were doing routine road repair on it. RVers who have propane tanks that hold 10 pounds or more are prohibited from using the alternative suggestions at Fort McHenry Tunnel, that's on I-95, or the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel, I-895. Instead, RVers will need to use the western section of I-695 around the tunnels. We're hearing this bridge will likely take years to rebuild. What a mess. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. All right, let's end this on a positive note. This is something that everybody should see once. Uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of sandhill cranes have descended on the Platte River in Nebraska, and this is part of their annual migration. And the pictures that we've seen shared on social media are stunning. Uh, the row, the row, uh, R O W E, the row sanctuary near Gibbon, Nebraska, is a very popular viewing spot for the crane season, and it runs uh, right through this week. Uh, it's really worth seeing. Millions uh, of these spectacular birds uh, pass through on their summer migration. That's right, they're heading up to their summer <laughs> uh, hanging out grounds. Uh, and a lot of RVers come to the area to watch the crane migration. It's one of the bucket list items that uh, 
you uh, you really should put on yours. So check it out. Uh, on the show notes for this episode uh, at rvlifestyle.com slash podcast, we will put a link to the uh, Rose Sanctuary's live crane cam. So if you can't get there, go over to our show notes, find that link, and uh, you'll be able to see what it uh, looks like. All right, your questions coming up after this. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And Battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig too. Battleborne battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. All right, time now for the RV questions of the week. And we love getting your questions. We love getting your comments. If you have the, a question about the RV lifestyle or a comment on anything we talked about today, just send them to us at our personal email address, which is Mike and Jen at RVlifestyle.com. You got a question? We do. We've been snowbirds down here in Florida all season. And I swear the main slide out of our fifth wheel is sagging. What can I do about that? And that's from Everett. Well, Everett, that's a pretty um, common uh, complaint that many long-term campers have about their slide outs. And uh, the fact is that that extra strain is placed on your slide out mechanism. Whenever those slide outs are extended for prolonged periods of time, uh, like when you're snowbirding there for a couple of months, uh, there is a way to relieve that strain, and you may want to invest in a couple of uh, support braces. Uh, Campco makes one called the Easy Lift Slide Out Support, and they uh, will prevent that strain from letting your slide sag a little bit, and it provides additional support um, so that you know it's a little, even a little bit more stable. Uh, they're adjustable, so you can fit any height you want. And I think they're like 75 bucks for a pair of them. Uh, because of that sag, we always recommend that if you're going to store your RV, do so with the slides in. And uh, even in, particularly in the wintertime when there could be snow on the top of them, if you're in a northern climate. Uh, and then if not, if you're just going to be staying in it for more than a month, uh, we'd also suggest uh, using those support uh, braces as well. Uh, they're a good investment to protect your very major investment, which is your RV. And when you think about it, you know, you're in those slide outs. That's pretty heavy, particularly the long ones. And when you, you add more weight in it when you sit, and it's eventually going to sag. And usually, you know, you just push this button, and it'll all come in just fine. Usually. But sometimes, particularly if you've had that RV for a while, uh, it can uh, damage your, your mechanism, and you might have to call a technician then. So... Uh, those support uh, braces, just a good investment. All right. I hope you enjoy this podcast. And, you know, we don't urge people enough because we don't like to beg. But if you do follow this podcast and you like it, would you give us a, a good review uh, on uh, your whatever platform you listen to it, uh, iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts? Uh, uh, we would really appreciate that. Tell others about it. And uh, that way more people will find the RV podcast every week. Send us your questions, Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. Happy trails.